Well, with the announcement of the Ryzen 7000 series, there's clearly some reviewers that already have these in hand. Although obviously we haven't passed the embargo on when the uh, you know review data is supposed to be published, that doesn't mean that on sites like Geek Geekbench we aren't going to start seeing some results, and we're seeing a result for the 7600X. Um, a uh, couple of results, one a bit higher than the other, and if we look at the higher of the two results with a single core of 2174 uh, and a multi-core of 11,369, um, and compare it to the claims made in AMD's slide, which they revealed the Ryzen 5 7600X would have a Geekbench single thread performance of around 2175, uh, this does seem to be confirming that, although we did have, like I said, that one uh, slightly lower score there as well. Now, when we look at this, um, uh, according to this video cards article on the topic, eh, we can go ahead and see uh, these scores stacked up against... Um, actually, sorry, we have the pricing in this one. We have um, another article, sorry, here with a 7950X also uh, having some leaked results in Geekbench. And if we take a look at this one, uh, we're seeing a single core score of 2217, so a bit higher single core result for the 5950X. Then obviously a much higher multi-core result, given that it is a 16 core 32 thread chip, uh, rather than six core 12 thread. And then uh, it was this one where uh, video cards have put together a nice little table for us to look at because there's also been some leaked Geekbench scores on our um, Intel 13th gen. Because in AMD's announcement, um, they were always comparing to the 12th gen from Intel, which fair enough, that is the generation that is currently out. But within the next month or, month or so of the, um, of the Ryzen launch, we're expecting to get the 13th gen from Intel, so that's really gonna be where the competition's at. So if we look at this, it is looking like the 7000 series in single core performance will be ahead of the uh, 12th gen, at least in Geekbench. Again, every different test result and different games and things like that uh, could respond differently. Um, but at least in these uh, leaked scores, it is looking like our 7000 series does have a, a lead over the 12th gen. But in our leaked performance from the 13th gen, it's looking like the 13900K will be outperforming the single core performance that we're seeing leaked from the 7950X here. However, again, these are just leaked scores. This is not a full review. We don't know, um, you know, a lot of details. So that we can't read too far into this. Um, it is also looking like that 13900K will end up with a better multi-core score, uh, multi -core score than the 7950X. And remember that the 13900K will be assisted by a large number of efficiency cores, which help a lot in these multi-threaded workloads, um, but don't necessarily do a lot for you in, in gaming or less heavily multi-threaded workloads. And we are seeing a massive performance jump over the 5000 series. So it is nice to see um, some confirmation, at least in, in an early leak, of some of the performance claims that were being made by AMD there. However, um, another leak we're seeing from an engineering sample that's been, or I think it might be a qualification sample being tested, but an early sample is that the temperatures might run extremely high on these chips. This is being uh, reported by WCCF Tech, but I believe the original information is coming from Enthusiastic Citizen on Billy Billy, and he has a good track record of having early samples of Intel chips and um, sometimes AMD chips. Um, so, so I would definitely put some weight to this. And he's saying that the um, 7950X under heavy load uh, would be unable to maintain boosting over five gigahertz um, and going up to 230 watts and 95 degrees. And that on the same cooler, he's able to get um, Rocket Lake down at 270 watts at 82 degrees. So it's looking like our uh, AMD chips might be a little bit tougher to cool than their Intel competitors here, at least based on these, um, he says, all data from engineering sample and qualification sample, so accuracy is not guaranteed. Um, looks like also seeing the 7600X um, uh, running at some high temps there as well. 
Now, directly from AMD, we're seeing some thoughts on what is the sweet spot for your DDR5 memory, because remember, you will need DDR5 if you're gonna be jumping onto this new platform. And uh, their call is that DDR5 6000 is the best choice, although the exact quote is that that's based on a variety of things. Uh, it says, um, this is from AMD Robert here on their Discord, saying roughly yes, and to be very specific by sweet spot, I mean the best compromise of cost, stability, performance, availability, and ease. And also reminding us that two DIMMs are better than four because he says that's the nature of signal routing in DDR5 because it's very hard to route four slots at high speed. The signal integrity gets dicey. So basically recommending some DDR5 6000 and getting two sticks, not four, if you want to maintain some good clocks. Uh, he was also suggesting that um, when you're OCing your RAM, uh, that it's a little different because 111 mode isn't as important. He's saying that using an auto for the F clock and just OCing the RAM and memory controller in 11. So basically, auto 11 is now generally the best performer, again, according to him. And uh, he would have a lot of the info right now um, compared to all of us. So. Uh, jumping over to another little bit of a leak, a lot of people are interested in, okay, we saw these new chips coming out, performance looks great, but how about those 3D vCache versions? Um, because we saw massive performance gains there from the 5000 series, we had our 5800X 3D. So maybe if you wanted to wait a bit for the platform to mature and um, to uh, you know iron out some of those initial bugs and then get a f even faster gaming CPU, uh, maybe you want to wait for those uh, X3D versions. Well, our favorite uh, Digimon on <laughs> Twitter uh, is saying that V95. there's going to be a V95, a V9, and a V8 coming. And apparently in the comments, uh, when asked when to expect them, he replied CES, which would be January of next year. And, you know, whether that's when we'd actually get them or just see them announced and more information, they come a lot later. Uh, so we don't really know exactly when we'll be getting these, but it is interesting to see that at least according to Greymon, leaks, we don't know for sure, um, we could be seeing uh, a fuller range of 3D vCache variants this time around rather than just the 8-core version. I hope he's right. It would be nice to have some more choices like that. Um, we're seeing reports that the uh, GPU shipments have decreased a lot. Um, <laughs> Uh, and I don't need to dig into all of the details because we kind of already knew that, but it's looking like overall GPU sh uh, unit shipments decreased by 14.9% from last quarter with AMD shipments decreasing by 7.6%, Intel's by 9.8%, and Nvidia's decreasing by 25.7%. So definitely uh, you know, having more trouble selling these. <laughs> Hopefully we see some more price discounts incoming. Now on Intel GPUs, <clears throat> Uh, Intel has been, uh, they've been interviewed by PC Gamer, and there's a couple of interesting articles here. One is Intel is saying that they're still fully committed to their discrete GPUs um, and is even shifting a large part of their team onto their next generation already, although they're keeping their driver team largely focused on Alchemist to continue those driver improvements uh, that we know that we desperately need. <laughs> And in another um, article on PC Gamer uh, with, with the uh, Intel marketing guys, I'm spacing their names, what is it? Yeah, Tom Peterson and Ryan Shrout. Um, they're talking more about the performance here. And so they're claiming that they're gonna deliver their card that will be faster than the RTX 3060 at prices that are lower. So they are emphasizing that they will be aggressive on the pricing because they do acknowledge all of their downsides with the drivers and everything. Um, but they're also comp uh, also claiming somewhere in here, if I can find it, that their ray tracing performance um, is actually gonna be extremely competitive with Nvidia. And I believe they, co they uh, claim it's actually going to be uh, better ray tracing performance than NVIDIA. Where can I pull this up? Ray tracing. Can I can I find it? Yeah. Okay, so they sound very confident in the ray tracing performance. The good news is for consumers that we're going to make sure that this product is very competitive. Um, <clears throat> anyway, they're going to factor it all into pricing. Uh, it's interesting. We'll see how it goes. I still think most people should avoid getting them 
at launch just due to the uh, software needing to mature all of that, but we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, we're also seeing some interesting OLED monitor announcements. It's looking like we're gonna get another 34 inch uh, ultra wide uh, 3440 by 1440, this time from Samsung with their Odyssey OLED G8 monitor. And it's looking like uh, this one will be coming in with a 175 Hertz refresh rate. And I believe it does have the QD OLED technology. Um, so it'll be interesting uh, to get more OLED monitors out there in the wild. And we're seeing LG announce the world's first bendable 42 inch OLED television. We'd already seen a bendable ultra wide. Um, now it's looking like we're seeing a bendable 42 inch television. Although based on its design, it certainly seems and marketing images here, while it's listed as a television, it certainly seems like this is uh, being targeted as a possible gaming monitor. So again, it'll be interesting to see how that goes. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure I need the bendable screen um, where you can literally change, you know, adjust the, the bend in it. I think they said up to a 900R curve or you could go flat. So, and then, you know, the little handle things to, to do that. Anyway, seems interesting. I hope all of you have an excellent day.